<clears throat> All right, so you're going to be learning about parallelograms. Um, up here, let's start. Here's the definition of a parallelogram. It's a quadrilateral, so something with four sides, with both pair of opposite sides parallel. So what that means is notice by our markings, this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So two pair of parallel sides. That's the definition. Properties that happen all the time, every time with parallelograms are the following. There are four different things. Um, first, opposite sides are always congruent, which means they're always the same length. So if this side is length five, automatically this side is length five. If this side is length 13, automatically this side is length 13. Now, not necessarily are all four sides the same, but the opposites, the ones across the figure from one another, will always be congruent for sides. Next, the diagonals bisect each other. What does that mean? <laughs> well, diagonal is when you draw a line from one corner of the figure to another. That's a diagonal. So I have a diagonal there and another diagonal here. Bisect each other means they cut each other in half. So this portion is equal to this portion. So if this is 5, the rest of the way across is also 5. This one is also bisected, so it is cut into perfect halves also. So if this is length 7, this is also length 7. That's what bisect each other means. They cut each other in half. Opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so if we take a look at this, the angles across the figure from one another are the same size. Okay. And our final one is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive means as you're going around the parallelogram, the ones next to each other. So A comes right before B. Those are consecutive. So this is consecutive. Opposite is when you have to go across the figure to get to each other. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive are supplementary which remember means they add to equal 180 degrees. So angle A and angle B are consecutive, they would add to be 180. Angles B and C are consecutive, they would add to be 180. Angles C and D are consecutive, they would add to be 180. A and D are consecutive, they would add to be 180. So those are the properties of a parallelogram. Make sure you have those in your notes because as you go forward, you'll want to know Not what happens in a parallelogram. All right, so keeping those properties of parallelograms in mind, here we have a question that says in parallelogram KLMN, LM is 32. So let's first, they did trace over it for us, okay, but notice it's this parallelogram on the back of the backboard. LM is 32. Where is LM? There it is. It's the top of our parallelogram from L to M. What is the measure of KN? Well, Notice those are opposite sides of a parallelogram. And what was the property about opposite sides? They're congruent. So if ML is 32, NK is also 32. Here we go. In parallelogram KLMN, angle LKN. So that's how we locate our angle. The letter in the middle is where it's located. So it's going to be located at K, specifically from L to K to N. This corner right here is an 85 degree angle. What's the measure of angle NML? Again, it's located where your middle letter in your name is. So it's right here, specifically N to M to L. Okay, if this angle is 85, is this what we want to decide in a parallelogram is are they opposite or consecutive because they have different properties depending. And since these are across the figure from one another, they are opposite angles. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. So if LKN is 85, NML would also be 85 degrees.